I tend to start with the iPhone and I use many apps to process the photo and to create a cyanotype I then create a negative and use that to print. I fell in love with photography when I was 12 with the Polaroid um, land camera and making instant photographs and the smell, I loved that, that part of the photography. Um, and then moved on into single lens reflex cameras, doing slides, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then in uh, 1997, when we moved to the Cape, I joined the camera club. And the camera club had a speaker come to demonstrate something called Photoshop. And I sat and watched this, and I was appalled absolutely appalled at what they were doing to the image. And I said, I can't, I cannot accept that. I need to move into a different kind of photography. And that's kind of how I got to meet up with Midge, who was my teacher back in 1999, to learn about cyanotypes. And I fell in love with that. Did not touch the digital world really at all. For, for a long time. Uh, I would create negatives with uh, slides. And so I have tons of very small cyanotypes that I love. So here's the tiny negative from a Holga. And these are tiny little cyanotypes that I just love. And I went to an exhibit at a gallery in Orleans and I saw somebody's work with an app called Snapseed and I fell in love with it. It's called post-processing. Um, a lot of people, traditional particular uh, photographers, have a hard time with this part of photography. But for me, it is the most creative, is after the photograph. And because I can use many different apps to portray a feeling that I had when I saw what I saw. Um, I guess in some ways, probably some photographers use Photoshop to do that. But I never learned Photoshop. And what I loved about learning these apps was that it gave us all access to amazing creativity. And then one day I said, well, why not combine the two techniques? and see what they look like. And so that's all has led me to this exhibit of uh, intentionally creating the work to give it a feel of um, a historical feel, a mood about these houses that I absolutely love. What I'm doing now, it differ differentiates from when I was first doing them years ago because I'm pressing them tight so they're more like a negative. So the light has to go through them in such a way. Before doing it that way, it would be the whole thing and the light would go around and under and it would create a form on the papers. But, but the wet side types, they're wiggly. There, the light is all over the place. Okay, so here it is. It's ready for me. It's been in the sun for two and a half hours. These clamps hold it really tightly. It's really better if you use glass, but I wouldn't be able to carry this if it was glass. So I'm lifting this up like that. Okay. See, this is the condensation here because it was a wet one. And a use saran wrap gives it different effects. Just so slowly remove everything here. And I'll flip it upside down or I'll put it somewhere where it's not too bright. And there's a feeling that's in the wet cyanotypes that, that has a softness, but yet um, I think there's an energy to it. It's kind of quiet. And my paintings have that going on. My art practice sort of comes out of uh, my experience in art school. I was older when I went back. When I went to school from high school, I hadn't been anywhere since high school in 1963, and then went to community college 
for three years and then mass art for three years. When COVID hit, I just shut down. I couldn't do anything. And I had all this time. And I, I was like, shut down. So after it started to pass, and during that time, Amy and Rebecca had asked me if I wanted to be in the cyanotype show. And I thought, oh yeah, why not? Even though I hadn't done them in a long time. I found out about the wet cyanotype, which the last time I was doing cyanotypes did not exist. The whole cyanotype world had changed in the 10 years that I was just focusing on painting. So uh, I, you know, I went online, looked at all the tutorials and whatever. I knew the basic stuff, you know, the chemistry, the paper, and whatever. And that's what I did. And uh, it was so much fun. I started working in cyanotype in the 1990s and I was using a UV light box and um, I was working with a nude figure and it was a really difficult process because the negative you had to do uh, process it in the dark and sometimes it would take me eight hours. Was, there was not quite the digital revolution and when I moved to Cape Cod in 2003, I started doing cyanotype again. And I like the unexpected surface of fabric. So I was working a lot with cotton and um, also dyeing different colors of um, like pink and blue, green. But I really like blue. Blue's a color that's one of my favorite colors. It harkens to the sky, the sea. I just fell in love with working with cyanotype again, revisiting it, because it was kind of like being back in the dark room and just so simple, a simple form of photography. I love photograms, putting objects on the fabric, and then voila, something happens. It's magic. There is still that magic of the dark room with that, and I start cutting out these things, and I start playing with them, and I get into the zone, and it's very much like a meditation. I even breathe differently when I'm doing it. You know, it, it's the creative process. Well, the art that I'm working on now, um, cyanotype on fabric, they're backlit. They're LED mixed media cyanotypes. And I love the idea of light. I love the idea of working with sea creatures. And I think it kind of comes from my love of living in Provincetown and on Cape Cod and it harkens back to when I was a little girl and I'd go beachcombing with my mother in Provincetown and swimming at Herring Cove Beach. It's sentimental but it's something I've always loved and I love the smell of the sea and you know the salt and it was always so hard to leave Provincetown and leave Cape Cod at the end of the summer to go to school and then the excitement again of coming back in June you know, going over the bridge and you could you pull down the windows and um, you'd smell the salt. And you had your little rituals in the summer. And now I get to live here year round and I've lived here year round since 2003. So um, how lucky can, I, can anybody be to live here all the time and get to be around all this beauty? So I express it in my artwork. Pre-water bath. It's kind of nice even, I like it in this state. <laughs> the happy accident is really what it's all about for me. Um, you know, yes, we all love the control, but when you're out of control is when you make the best stuff. <laughs>